Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to roughly graph or sketch a quadratic equation. And the example I have here is y is equal to negative x squared minus 3x plus 10. Now I'm going to go through a lot of theory in this tutorial and your teachers are probably not going to expect you to replicate most of the work in an exam but it will certainly give you a good understanding into the shortcut formulas uh, that I will show you in my next video. So let's go ahead and see how this is done. The first and easiest thing to do is to find the y-intercept. So number one, finding the y-intercept means all I have to do is to find y when x is equal to zero and that of course is equal to positive ten and in fact all I have to do is to recognize the sign and the last term as positive 10 to find the y-intercept. The second thing I'm going to do is to rearrange this equation from standard form into what's called vertex form. So a standard form quadratic equation looks like y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c well in vertex form it looks like y is equal to v x plus w squared plus k where v w k are any real number so let's go through step by step on how to take it from this form to this form First of all, I'm going to factorize a negative out, so that will leave me with x squared plus 3x minus 10. Next thing I'm going to do is to add a number to this expression. I'm going to add 9 fourths. And if I add 9 fourths, I have to subtract 9 fourths to maintain equivalency with the expression above. So satisfy yourself that this is equal to that, as the 9 fourths cancelled out. Now why have I done that? It's because I want to complete the square now on the first three terms. So x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths can be rewritten as x squared plus 3 on 2 sorry x plus 3 on 2 all squared. Please review the video on how to complete the square which I'll include in the description below. So now we'll complete the brackets. Um, 9 fourths minus 10. Well, that will be equivalent to, if I factorize out a negative, 9 fourths plus 10 will be equivalent to 49 all over 4. All right, now, and if I take the negative back in, I'll get x minus x plus 3 on 2 brackets all squared plus 49 divided by 4. So now I have the equation, our original equation, written in vertex form. Alright, before I go any further, um, I've missed out on an important step, so I'm going to change this here to point number three and I'm going to include another step in the middle here and that's to do with the coefficient in front of the x squared term. If the coefficient in front of the x squared is positive our 
parabola, our graph, is going to look something like this. It's going to concave upwards. And if it's negative, our graph is going to concave downwards. So the coefficient in front of the x squared will determine if we have a smile or a frown. So if it's a positive we'll get a smile and if it's a negative we'll get a frown. Let me draw a set of axes. Alright, so a graph of x squared is going to look something like this. Alright, so that's y equals x squared. A graph of 2x squared is going to look a bit like this. So this is y is equal to 2x squared. So the coefficient in front of the x squared will determine the steepness or sharpness of our graph. And what if I were to gra uh, graph negative x squared? Negative x squared will look just like x squared but a mirror image of it. So with our vertex form of equation the coefficient in front of the squared term determines the steepness or the sharpness of the graph and whether it's uh, a smile or a frown as we discussed in point number two. Okay so moving on and let me clear what I have drawn here. Now the graph x squared plus 2 would look like this. And if I was to graph negative x squared plus 2, it would look something like so. So we can see this plus k term in our vertex form of equation will shift our vertex up or down by k. Okay, in this case it's by 2. So if it is a so if k is a positive number, the vertex will move upwards. If k is a negative number, the vertex will move downwards. And by the way, the vertex is either a maximum or minimum point. If we have a smiley graph, our vertex is a minimum, and if we have our, a frowny graph, then the vertex is a maximum. Alright, so now I'm going to graph another variation. This time I'm going to graph y is equal to x plus 2 squared plus 2 and uh, let me get rid of this one So the position of this turning point is determined by this k term. It's also determined by this w term. Right, the turning point happens when the squared term is equal to 0. So in this case, x is equal to negative 2 for the squared term to equal 0. 
So effectively, this plus 2 has the effect of shifting the vertex across by negative 2. So basically the opposite direction of the sign here. So the sign in the squared term uh, determines which direction the vertex moves horizontally. So if it's a positive, the, ver the vertex moves to the left. If it's a negative, the vertex moves to the right. So in our case, the vertex point or turning point is going to be the negative of 3 on 2, and it's going to be 49 on 4. The final step in this process is to find the x-intercepts, if there are any. Now the x-intercepts can be found if we set y is equal to 0. So we can write down negative x plus 3 on 2 all squared plus 49 on 4 is equal to 0. And if I rearrange this a little bit I will get x plus 3 divided by 2 squared is equal to 49 on 4 which leads to x plus 3 on 2 is equal to plus or minus 7 on 2 so therefore x is either equal to minus 5 or x is equal to positive 2. So our x-intercept points are negative 5, 0 and 2, 0. Alright, so putting it all together and sketching our function y is equal to negative x squared minus 3x plus 10 we know it's going to be a sad graph because the coefficient in front of the x squared is negative. We know that the y-intercept occurs at y equals 10. We know that the turning point is negative 3 on 2, which is negative 1.5. And, and the y-coordinate of our turning point is 12 and a quarter. And by the way, the turning point is another term for the vertex. And our x-intercepts are negative 5 and positive 2. So our graph should look something like... Alright, that's not perfect, but that's not bad for a hand plot on a computer. So please give me a thumbs up if you have found this video helpful and it's helped you better understand how to sketch a parabola. If you are a math student, please feel free to subscribe for future videos that may help you on assignments or exams. If you have any question that you would like me to do a video on, please feel free to comment on any of the videos that you've seen. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.